and let's see if there's a conversation today. Uh, Connor in Texas, a recurring caller who has been amicable in the past, um, wants to continue a discussion about Baha'i faith. Connor, you're live with Eric and V. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, doing well. Um, so we are hearing a little bit of feedback. So if you're on speaker or you've got us on in the background, could you mute that please? Yeah, it, it's it's feeding back. Uh, I have y'all on a headset, so I don't know what the feedback could be coming from. It, 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 it could be that um, the volume is loud enough on your ears that it's getting picked up by your mic. Mm -hmm. um, there are times when I've had the volume up on my earpiece so much that it gets picked up on the microphone. Uh, so it could be that. And actually now it's gone. Perfect. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I just turned down the volume on the phone. What's up? It's almost like you do this for a living. I know. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So Connor, um, did you have a specific topic that you wanted to talk about? Um, I'm I'm kind well, of in a place where I, I'm 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 not wanting to meander too much. So if we can find a specific thing to talk about, that'd be good. Well, it was originally intended to be a maybe try and pick up from a, a fir the first conversation we had before V left for Oregon, I think it was. And she sounded, I mean, yeah. they sounded like, uh, they, uh, V, is, you made it sound like you would like to, uh, you wanted to look into it. So this is just like seeing if y'all wanted to uh, pick up with it. Yeah. I, I don't remember. I feel, I feel so bad. I, I, <laughs> I never remember what the last conversation was. So y'all are going to have to bring me up to speed well i will admit um i have not done too much additional digging into the baha'i faith um essentially though the the way that i would love to take this is i i mean it, it's it, it's difficult to kind of engage with minority religions on a show like this in a couple of different ways just because of the mindset i'm bringing to the table which is, hey, the reason that I dislike certain religions is because they are actively participating in oppression in areas like in, in their own spheres, right? And also in spheres where they frankly just don't belong and should butt out of. And applying skepticism in those areas can help us identify that harm and hopefully address it. In situations where someone calls in and they're talking about becoming a pagan or their Baha'i faith, I do want to take a little bit of a different track, right? I'm not going to saddle you with the, the religious oppression that other religions bring to the table. And I frankly don't know enough about your religion to know if it also is oppressive in certain ways. So I am coming at this with kind of a blank slate, but I would really like to dig into that skeptical piece of it and really kind of get to the crux of why you believe that the Baha'i faith is correct. Because if I remember from our last conversation, you had mentioned that it was kind of an amalgam of the other, you know, kind of Abrahamic faiths, but you also had well, issues with those other faiths and the legitimacy of them. So in my mind, no, no? is that wrong? No, uh, it's, well, it's not, we don't have issues with other faiths. Well, the, the it's legitimacy not, it's of not really their an amalgamation. Okay. Okay. How would you describe so, your relationship with, say, the 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 Christian Bible or the the Hebrew Bible, all of that? So it's more of a uh, there's this belief that we have called progressive revelation, in that as time go, as the eons go by, new messengers are sent to give an update for our growth as a as a society and as a race to help move us in the proper direction. So it's kind of like how Christianity builds on Judaism and Islam and Muslims believe they are built on top of that. They even call the Quran the third Testament. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's kind of the, the same line of uh, building on top of. So the reason I have a problem with other religions saying that beyond the obvious, like, uh, you know, retro canonizing someone's, you know, story in the same way that we'll see remakes of things coming out of Hollywood was like, oh, actually, this all happened in this way. And, you know, ignore the other thing. Um, apart from like that element, my concern is that a lot of these other beliefs have an idea of God, especially Christians and 
yeah, Christians specifically have this idea that God is omnipotent, right? And there's this there's this all powerfulness that to me doesn't make sense in the context of progressive revelation because it seems like a very inefficient and kind of useless way to get to truth if you do have the ability to just give people truth. Is the Baha'i faith positing any kind of omnipotent power or is it more of a, you know, this is the only way things possibly could have happened situation? Wait, I, I'm sorry. You may have to rephrase that last uh, question there. My so question can, is I'm about your sure God, I... essentially. So right. the reason that I reject the progressive revelation of the Christians is because it is in direct conflict with their idea of an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-good God. So the reason I would reject it in the Baha'i faith would be the same if you also had that kind of a God, but I don't know if you do. So what is, do you have a God that is kind of triomni or maximally great? Well, we don't really have a description for God because we can't know God in its entirety. But when I, I want to get to the progressive revelation part, it has more to do with, uh, it's kind of, we, we have an analogy. It's kind of like when you uh, have a child in school, you, the, the, you have, you teach them things along the way as they grow and develop. And then you just give them a more, uh, accurate version along the way if that if that makes sense to you um no may i yeah go for it uh, so I, I i i would like to respond to that but also ask a question kind of as a follow-up so the, the the first piece that really gets me is um it sounds like you're trying to ignore the times when they're directly contradicting do you recognize that the holy books that you're referencing contradict each other well, I'm not going to try and uh, defend. Th I'm not going to try and defend them. But as we are today. It, no, it sounds like you're defending their divinity, and if they are divine and also contradict each other, then yeah, you do have a lot to explain, right? That is a problem. That saying I'm not going to do that doesn't absolve you of it; just makes you willingly ignorant of. And I wouldn't want you to do that, so I'm challenging you. What's up with okay. the contradictions? So this might be easier if you give an example. Sure. Um, so it, we can go from the um, the Old Testament or Torah and compare that to the New Testament, and we can see that what um, Moses wrote down um, to the Israelites, um, those books. You know, look at Leviticus, and then compare that to what's being taught by jesus in the new testament uh there are contradictions right and right with a specific example of the differences um did you got one at hand ready i mean you're the one who goes into old testament sure um, studies <laughs> for me sure so well no no <laughs> yeah go for okay it. um do you follow levitical uh the the law of leviticus right do you do you not eat shellfish do you not plant crops in the same field or wear mixed fabrics um do you um you know as a society we, we do you believe that the, people uh, ought to the be social murdered? laws of the old of the old books you don't follow the social laws okay so if something the doesn't old, count the social laws of the old books okay so if something doesn't count as a like how do you determine that something's a social law or not a social law well, it's kind of a, we, there's kind of like a generic uh, two category between spiritual laws and uh, social laws. So like you described like a way to organize human society as, as the example you just gave. Um, those would be social laws. Actually, I think that a lot of those, especially the abolitions against homosexuality, um, were considered moral laws. And today there are still people who would consider those moral laws, not social laws. Okay. Do you think that your God's morality changes over time? I'm trying to figure out how to explain this. Sure. Yeah. Because like I, like I keep saying, it's about, well, I, I, and, 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 and I hear God's the reason morality. It's about, 
Well, I, I, I hear you talk about raising the child, but let's say I'm looking at this this hypothetical child, and at three years old, I tell them that touching their, their touching their private parts is dirty and filthy, and then when they're seven, I go, no, no, I'm just kidding. Like I did damage there. I should not have told them that touching their naughty bits was dirty and filthy, um, or calling them naughty bits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but do you get what I'm saying? You know, if if somebody as a teenager um, brought home a a same sex partner that they were they were in a happy relationship with, and I told them that that was vile and it's sinful, and I cast them out of the house, and then when they come back in their twenties, I go, oh yeah, no, it's totally fine. That says a lot about me, doesn't it? I'm not. I'm not actually well, talking about how he's how the society is being organized. Those are moral commandments. I mean, it's just the the best way I can describe it for you is that it's it's about us when we are ready. It's not necessarily about uh, okay. So about some of the things you said. Sure. I'm sure we can agree that what we know of as those old texts are probably nowhere near as what they originally were, right? That's a, no, you're appealing to a mystery. You're appealing to something you don't have evidence of. And because of that, I'm not letting you get away with that. Unless Wait, you- I don't understand. We know that there are mistranslations all the time throughout history. We do. And even looking at old translations of things, they don't wipe away the fact that you're left with this book. All that means is that your God left a really, really bad history or knew maybe, did your God maybe know that things were going to get mistranslated and was totally okay with that uh, along the line? Like, that's just more problems. That's not less. So if I understand what you just asked, then the best way I can describe it is, the is that over time, it's that people are the ones who misuse and abuse the authority they believe was given by God for their own ends, and then they distort it in such a way that it probably doesn't even look like what it was originally intended to be. I, charitably, hopefully, that may be the case, but unless we have evidence to the contrary. Yeah, my question not. is, how do, how do you know when that has happened and when it hasn't? Because it just sounds really convenient for that God to hide behind the idea that mistranslations are covering up the really nice thing that he really meant to say. To be honest, I don't really have the, I guess I don't have the accurate answer that you're looking for. Uh, I, I but don't. that's why we have, uh, that's why, but the issues that I've laid out is kind of the reason why there is this uh, teaching of progressive revelation is to have a correction yeah when the when such things happen like right that. it's that that makes that makes a lot of sense if you want to continue believing in a thing and the things are contradictory and change their mind and you still want to believe it then yes progressive revelation is a great way to explain that if you don't look too closely at it but what we're doing now is we're putting that under the microscope and we're saying okay so let's assume that that's the, the way things have worked and that is progressive revelation. How do actual contradictions in moral law factor into progressive revelation? And if you're going to say, well, it's just we weren't ready, are you condoning a system in which hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people have died as a result of violating this moral law that we just weren't ready to understand yet? Like, are you saying that this is a good way to roll out your moral law or is this a bad way that we are just kind of stuck with because we don't have access to a God with all knowledge? Do you know where I'm going with this? Do you yeah, yeah. I, 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 I an example I is is, th is thou shalt not permit a witch to live. Right? Yeah. That is that is backed up in Old Testament. That's backed up in in uh, in Muslim teachings, right? Um, and I don't know where that was taken off the wall. Um, you know, taken off the 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 bulletin board. Of, well, it, of, of certainly after the tens of thousands of people were burned as witches, <laughs> killed or tortured or displaced for being witches. So, like, was that a result of the moral law not yet? Like, like, how do you explain that, for example, in your worldview of well, we're just rolling this out progressively? Well, I, I thought I did go over that about the uh, people distorted 
to for their own ends aspect. Well, yeah, and and that is also a good way to stop thinking about it, right? That's a thought stopping technique where you go, oh, well, that's just other people, right? But then we have to ask, how do we know? How do you know that the burning times was not God's will and was the will of, you know, people misunderstanding it? If you say you well, don't uh, you don't know much about this God, right? We tried to get to, into specifics and you're like, we can't know God. We don't know it. Okay. So how do you know that that wasn't the intention? You're right. I can't know because I wasn't around back then to ask the proper questions to whoever delivered the message. And you know what? We don't know either. And that's why we don't make those claims because right. we don't think that we've got that ability and we don't really think anybody does but if somebody says they do that's why we ask these questions exactly so if, if we if, if we project this forward that the other thing that i had the pin in that i wanted to talk about was um mormons so was joseph smith uh divinely inspired to bring a new message from baha'u'llah or not baha'u'llah from god same thing no no oh. Yeah, not but, the same thing. No, uh, Baha'u'llah was a prophet, right? Yes. Yeah. So, from God, was Joseph? Uh, we don't call him a prophet. Oh, okay. Um, was Joseph Smith divinely inspired? Uh, he's not uh, mentioned by Baha'u'llah when he uh, when he when he mentioned uh, the different uh, manifestations of God. Okay. That were sent previously. So that seems to me at like the most contemporaneous account that I can think of, one of the most recent accounts of what I would consider to be progressive revelation the way that you're describing it. Um, mm -hmm. And so let's say I became the 2022 version of Joseph Smith, right? I want to fool you and I want to fool Baha'i people into thinking that I have a divine message. Um, how can you determine if I'm lying to you? And how would you be able to to figure that out? Because that's a really, really important thing to know. Well, personally, if someone did that, they would have to, I'd have to first see what they were teaching. Uh, like, what is the message they are trying to convey? Sure. What if my message was fucking awesome? Um, it is the most awesome message you can imagine. Um, it is so much better for society. Um, would you believe that I was divinely inspired? It depends on what your message is. That, like you would have to actually give me specifics on it. But th why would that matter if you don't know God and what God's will is and what that ultimate end goal for morality is? Why would it matter what he's teaching? Yeah, the, the awesomeness of what I have to say, no matter what the specifics was, would need to have that touch point, would need to have that thing to compare it to. Otherwise, it well, sounds like Baha'i people are just looking for the most awesome things people say. If it if it if it's cool enough, then it's divinely inspired. If it's not cool enough, then it's not. No, well, the thing is, we are taught by the faith to conduct an independent investigation of truth, and so the we are supposed to look into it on ourselves and not just take others at their word. And well, there is we. In fact, uh, there is no, how am I trying to put this? We are, no, that doesn't work. I'm having a bit of trouble trying to uh, phrase this. You're well, good. And it also probably doesn't help that we came at you hard and fast today with a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff. Uh, how dare you not be like on the ball for 20 million things back to back? Um, that was totally understandable, Connor. No, no, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Do you want to sit on that for a bit? And so, unless me, you want to. Maybe there's another way I can explain this. Uh, it's another teaching in the faith about uh, how we should not be restricted to just looking at one faith, even if it's the one we grew up in, to see if that's the right one for us. Like, parent, Baha'i parents are encouraged to expose their children as they grow up to other faiths. And I even know a uh, this older couple, even though their son and his wife both grew up Baha'i, they were still raised with the belief that, well, now they're agnostic, well, now those two are agnostic. So they were raised with the belief that, hey, it's okay if it doesn't, if, if being a Baha'i isn't your thing and 
you just want to go be agnostic on it. Yeah, and that that's kind of thing. That's really cool. And honestly, religions that conduct themselves in that way and encourage individual growth into whatever you want to believe and then are fine with you after you make a choice. Awesome. Cool. I don't have an ethical problem with that. What I do have questions about is that you, Connor, and I don't want to talk about like all of Baha'i people, right? You very, very clearly do believe that the Baha'i faith is correct. And what my questions for you want to get at is like, when you went on that exploration of faith, when you did analyze the evidence, what was it that convinced you? Because so far, I feel like we've asked some questions and we've gotten some answers that I could have gotten from a Christian who just was parroting their pastor, which is the concerning thing to me. So I know that we kind of put you on the spot and I would love to dive into this some more if you're open to it, but that's kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah, it, 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 I think you hit the nail on the head. The reason why that spoke to me so deeply is because that was exactly what I was told in church: is God was God was perfect, and any of the problems that I had were actually problems that other people have, and it's not actually God. It was, it wasn't addressing it. It was just stopping the thought. And um, and a lot of the time, we need to be told like, "Oh, hey, there's another question after that," because we just haven't thought of it ourselves, or it hasn't been presented well. And that's never on you, Connor, right? I think that you honestly care Mm -hmm. about what is true. And I think that this is what you have convinced, you are convinced of. And now what's exciting to me is that we are going to get to dive into that. And if you have really good Mm -hmm. reasons for believing what you believe, I might be convinced. And that would be super interesting to me. And I, I I mean, personally, I I just want to first see where the gatekeeping out Joseph Smith and Mormons would be, but like... (laughs) I, I, you're really on that one. I really am. I really am. I don't know why he doesn't belong in the club. Um, I mean, I, I, I would, if I were to like take Joseph Smith, there was some terrible, terrible shit that he did and compare him to Muhammad. Um, Muhammad was pretty awful. And, you know, if, if, if I were to look at those two, I think through modern lenses, I'd go, okay, neither of those were, were divinely inspired. Those guys okay, are but awful. Then that but, would also be just pulling what you think is divinely inspired based on what appeals to your personal morality. Exactly. That's, and I'm just repeating is, back what right. it seems like Connor is saying. And so, not something we want to be doing. Yeah. Right. What, it's just not a good test. We should move on, I think, to another call. Fair enough. But Connor, thank you for calling in and uh, for being open and honest about where you're at. Could I make one last comment on the Mormon thing? That yeah. Might maybe. So when it comes to Mormons, we consider them part of Christianity. So I guess the thing is they would be more considered as having been followers of Jesus's revelation, if that's a be- if that makes any sense. It it does. It just adds an entire other layer of really really crazy claims. Um and from there then, you know, was Jesus did Jesus come to the United States and preach to Native Americans and you know, were there great wars between, um, you know, tribes of, of native, uh, Israelites and are native Americans actually Jewish, um, you know, and like all of those kinds of things that are claimed. Um, and so it, it just, it just adds on more, you know, um, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it feels like being Baha'i takes on a lot. That's my thought too. It's like you, you are taking on all the problems of all of them like they will they like have you ever watched like a christian and a muslim apologist go at it or even oh, like yeah. a christian and a christian from a different denomination just going at it like it's, it's essentially a whole game of my dad could beat up your dad essentially but for for the bahai saying no it's everybody's dad then you you've got all those 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 con- conflicts it and connor i would say the most uncharitable thing that i could describe that is as uh, is as it sounds like you need to be really good at cherry picking. And mm-hmm. that's not a great way to navigate the world. Well, here's 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 something else. Hmm. Cherry picking is just fine when you're building a worldview as long as you're not bringing divine baggage into it. If you could want to look at Ju- Judaism and Christianity and Islam and any other religion and be like, I like that, I like that, I like that, I'm going to take this phrase, I'm going to take that thing, 
Mm -hmm. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. That is totally fine. Everyone does that with everything all of the time. The problem is when you then create a religion out of it and say, these are the true things, because then you have to back up why they are objectively true as opposed to just, I like them. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we need to move on. But Connor, it was good talking to you today. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Take Bye. care. I just played out an entire story in my head now. You know, it, it, even the non-moral things, right? Like, let's say I'm your neighbor and you see that I'm that I'm that I'm picking radishes in my garden, okay. and you go, Eric, why are you picking your radishes this way? And I say, well, because God says this is the way that you should do it. And you go, oh, well, I pick radishes this way, and then I just yell heretic, and I just start going like, like, like what is happening in your brain? My brain is going all over the place today. It's just the idea that you know, when you add a moral. Uh, God component to even benign things, it becomes something that you fiercely need to defend. Right. And it, 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 yeah, it's rough. What if it's just something you like to do? And that's all the justification you need. Exactly.